distinguished colleagues, distinguished guests. Good afternoon. It's uh, January 5, 2021, or 2 p.m., and we're beginning the panel session for the defense of the thesis by Yulia Strelnikova. Uh, so that's uh, Tatiana's day, the day of students. Therefore, I would like to congratulate all the uh, current and past students with this holiday. Uh, and uh, we're finally beginning the panel session for the defense of the thesis by Yulia Strelnikova. The thesis is submitted for the academic degree of the candidate of sciences in chemistry. The specialization is 02003 again in chemistry. The topic of the thesis is uh, RH2 catalyzed reactions of 1-sulfonyl-1-2-3 triazoles with azurins and azoles containing weak anno and anion bonds. The synthesis of uh, in the th synthesis of nitrogen heterocycles under the order issued by St. Petersburg State University is October 16, 2020, number 9024 slash 1. I, Alexander Vasilyev, Doctor of Sciences in Chemistry, Professor of the Department of Organic Chemistry of St. Petersburg State University. Uh, the director of the Institute of Wood Biomass uh, Chemical Processing and Technosphere Safety of the St. Petersburg State Forest Technical University was appointed the chairperson of this dissertation board. Uh, they would also appear the candidates of the members of the board, and let me introduce them. Vadim Bayarsky, a doctor of sciences in chemistry, uh, associate professor, professor of the Department of Physical Organic Chemistry of St. Petersburg State University. Vadim is here in uh, uh, the room, and the following members of the board are working remotely. Mikhail Krosavin, Doctor of Sciences in Chemistry, Professor of the Russian Academy of Sciences, Head of Natural Compounds Chemistry Department of St. Petersburg State University. Mikhail, do you hear me? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you. Uh, Vasil Bakulev, Doctor of Sciences in Chemistry, Professor, Head of the Department of Organic Synthesis Technology, Urals Federal University. Uh, Vasily, do you hear us? Do you see us? And Anna Kuhn, Doctor of Sciences in Chemistry, Professor, Head of the Department of Organic Chemistry and Organic Substances Technology at the Sikorsky Kiev Polytechnic University uh, from Ukraine. Andrei, do you hear us? Do you see us? Yes, I do. Everything is okay. And we also have our candidate for the degree, Yulia Olegovna Strelnikova. And also we have the thesis supervisor, Mikhail Sergeyevich Novikov, Doctor of Sciences in Chemistry, Professor of the Department of Organic Chemistry of the St. Petersburg State University. So distinguished colleagues uh, who are working in the remote mode in order to improve the quality of our connection, kindly turn off your microphones during the speech of the candidate. And don't forget to turn them on when I give you the floor. I would also like to inform you that the panel session of our dissertation board is being recorded and uh, broadcast on the St. Petersburg State University website, and it is also interpreted into English. Currently, we have an email address posted on the page with a live broadcast, uh, and all the listeners can submit their questions to Ms. Trelnikova online, uh, the questions regarding the thesis or scientific discussion. These questions will be forwarded to me by our technical service and I will read them out during the discussion. The questions must be related to the presentation and the content of the thesis. And don't forget to, uh, don't forget to give your name and position if you submit a question. The questions that have nothing to do with the scientific discussion uh, or dissertation will not be voiced. Under the order on the procedure of granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University, approved by local normative acts, the session of the dissertation board is valid, providing two-thirds of the appointed board members are present. The total number is not to be fewer than four people. Our dissertation board consists of uh, five people. Everyone is with us today, including three members of the board who are working remotely. And we have multimedia connection with all the members of the board, as well as with our candidate for the degree. Uh, therefore, we have a quorum. Now a few words about our agenda. So, uh, our session should not last more than two hours, and uh, the agenda is follows. First comes the chairman's presentation about the documents submitted by the candidate for the degree and their conformity with the requirements. The chairman replies to questions, if any, five minutes for that. Second point, the candidate's presentation providing an overview and findings of the research. Fifteen minutes for that. Third comes uh, a third com question, questions to the candidates regarding the presentation. Then candidates replies to the questions, no more than four, five minutes. Reports on the thesis, 
Uh, the board members will be taking the floor in turns to provide their reviews and questions. Ten minutes per speaker. Then the chairman's report on the thesis. Ten minutes. Then candidates' comments about the reports on the thesis and replies to questions. Twenty minutes for that. And then comes open open discussion. Anyone present at the defense may state their position or ask questions on the thesis. Uh, two minutes per uh, person. And I kindly ask uh, you to fill in the registration form and introduce yourself if you have the floor. Then uh, the chairman will ask the questions submitted during the broadcast via our website. Then the candidates replies to the questions. Then presentation of the candidate's thesis supervisor. Three minutes for that. Then a five minute discussion before the open balloting on conferring or non conferring the academic degree. The discussion of the results of the defense is not broadcast. Next comes open balloting, vote counting, and recording of the results in the protocol. Then we're making a decision on whether to confer the academic degree or not. And finally, we'll listen to the candidate's closing speech. So any questions or comments uh, on our agenda, dear colleagues? <coughs> Should we register somewhere? No, uh, only those who want to ask a question, uh, not uh, the members of the board. If anyone wants to ask a question, for, um, out of the gas, or maybe those who are listening online. The members of the board do not need to register. Okay, let me start. So please don't forget to turn off your mobile phones. Uh, so, uh, the thesis by Yulia Strelnikova for the academic degree of the candidate of sciences in chemistry, specialization 020003, again in chemistry, is titled uh, Rhodium 2 uh, Catalyzed Reactions of 1 Sulfonyl 1 to 3 triazoles with azurins and azoles containing weak anno and anion bonds in the synthesis of nitrogen heterocycles. W uh, the thesis was approved for the defense um, by the order of the academic secretary of St. Petersburg State University, issued on October uh, the 2nd, 2020, number 8861 slash 1. Mr. Has prepared her dissertation at the St. Petersburg State University, and Mikhail Novikov, Doctor of Sciences in, chemi in Chemistry, Professor of the Department of Organic Chemistry, is the thesis supervisor. Four published works describe the research findings. They include uh, no papers published in peer-reviewed journals recommended by the Ministry of Education and Science, and four papers in publications indexed in Web of Science and Scopus. And the candidate has submitted the full set of documents to the academic secretary. The above mentioned documents comply with item 12, section 3 of the order. And all the documents uh, provided by the candidate for the degree uh, correspond with the requirements and they are found in the certification file of the candidate for the degree and the curator of the defense member of the department. Uh, of the dissertation board support has all the copies. And before I give the floor to our candidate, Members of the board, do you have general questions to the candidate for the degree? And is there a need to consider the full list of documents submitted by the candidate? No, no, no need for that. Okay. So please, Yulia, you have the floor. Distinguished members of the board, distinguished guests. Good afternoon. My thesis is dedicated to um, rhodium catalyzed reactions of uh, one sulfonyl one to three triazoles with azurins and ozol, uh, azoles, and the use of these uh, reactions in the synthesis of nitrogen containing heterocycles in contemporary organic synthesis, most economical and eco friendly. Uh, are the highly constructive reactions that allow us to uh, create several bonds during one synthesis stage. Um, and there is an active field of development. Uh, the uh, chemistry of metal carbonoids, high energy particles uh, generated from diazocarbonyl uh, uh, compounds uh, uh, using uh, transition metals. And the chemistry of alpha oxycarbonoids is well studied. Alpha amino carbonoids are the object of intensive study in the recent decades. The goal of this work was to develop new efficient synthesis methods of highly functional heterocycles 
based on uh, alpha aminocarbonoids reactions uh, with nitrogen containing heterocycles. Uh, the goals uh, included the search for reactive partners for aminocarbonoids, the selection of catalysts, and optimization of reaction uh, conditions, uh, the definition of applicability uh, limits, and experimental and theoretical study of the new mechanisms of these reactions. As reaction partners for sulfonyl triazoles, we've studied uh, uh, 2H azurins and also azoles that are capable to open in uh, the bonds NN and NO. Isoxazoles, pyrazoles, and uh, the derivatives of 1 to 4 oxidiazole. And the main idea of the strategy is that the new heterocyclic uh, compound is formed in one synthetic stage in the domino process that is launched by a minocarbonoid, passes the stage of the opening of the uh, substrate cycle and the cyclization of heteropolyan. Uh, atom efficiency of such reactions and also broad opportunities of the modification of the structure of the uh, heterocyclic uh, substrates create all the prerequisites to turn this process into efficient and uh, popular synthetic methods. Our study uh, was uh, studied, uh, start, has started with uh, the uh, study of interaction of rhodium catalyzed triazoles with 5 alkoxy uh, isoxazoles. So the correlations of uh, the parts depended on the uh, on the catalyst, on the conditions of the reactions. And during optimizations, we selected the conditions for the synthesis of all the isomer products, the perils uh, uh, received when we use uh, rhodium acetides, finding optimal uh, conditions for the reaction. We studied the applicability limits. And it was demonstrated that the best uh, payroll yield is uh, achieved for substrates that contain electro donor aryl substitutes and with the rise of acceptor capacity, uh, the yield drops. But we see the rise of dehydropyrazole uh, yield. And uh, dehydropyrazoles 9 are considered unstable. And the main field of their transformation is aromatization of pyrazine with a detachment of the toluol sulfine uh, acid molecule. And we've uh, offered uh, 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 the means to synthesize pyrazole 10. And after full conversion of uh, uh, initial products, we added 20% of pyrazole sulfuric acid and boiled for three hours until the full conversion to pyrazines. And one of the key, uh, one of the first ideas about the mechanism was that the reaction goes through. Uh, formation of 2H azurin that reacts with triazole. And with the, during our work, we found out that 5 alkoxy isoxazoles uh, are really capable to isomerize 2 azurin to carboxylates. And we've carried out experiments on the comparison of the yield of products for the triazole with isoxazole and azurin reactions. And it turned out that in conditions for parole synthesis, we can use two substrates. And as for uh, preparative uh, synthesis, we should use 5 alkoxy isoxazoles. And this demonstrates the difference of isoxazole reaction from azurin reaction. And we presume that the difference in the co combination of products can be connected with different combinations of uh, uh, isomeric dioxygens 11 that are different uh, by the CC bond. And when we see the opening of the cycle, we can have just Z isomer. And in case of azurin, we see the mixture of all of both isomers with a pre prevalence of E11. We've carried out quantum chemical calculations. We used hexatrions and a hydroperazine is um, formed directly using 1,6 electrocyclization. And according to our calculations, pyrrol can, uh, can be formed from azurin. And iso in isoxazole reaction, we should observe just the formation of a six-member product. And this contradicts the experimental fact. And this demonstrates the intermolecular pyrrole formation. And as experiments demonstrated, uh, this uh, here we use rhodium catalyst or with non-volume carboxylate ligand. And the mechanism that explains its role in the transformation of uh, diazic hexatrions at 11 to pyrrole 8 is given here on this slide when we see the rise in temperature and uh, more when we um, have more um, when we introduce more solution we see the uh, cyclization with 
into dehydropyrazine 9. And when the temperature increases, we see uh, the rise of uh, competitive intermolecular reaction with a complex formation of deuterium-13 with uh, rhodium acetate. And uh, here we also see the prototropic shift to pyrrole 17, and this leads to and pyrrole 8. Um, in the next part of work, we studied uh, the reactions of bicyclic uh, analogs of uh, sulfur nitro, uh, uh, of sulfonyl triazoles. Unfortunately, the experiments and the winners, the technical break number one. We, ha uh, we had a failure of connection with Mikhail. Julia, pardon. So we continue, dear colleagues. Uh, in the next part of our work, we studied the reactions of bicyclic analogs of sulfonyl triazoles that exist in the form of three uh, diazoindiline uh, two MNs. Unfortunately, these experiments demonstrated that these substrates are not active uh, in diazoindole reactions. When isoxazole was replaced by synthetic equivalent azarin, the reaction went smoothly uh, in the presence of uh, rhodium acetate and led to the formation of pyrazine endole. 18A as uh, the only product, and we've carried out, uh, we've optimized the reaction conditions, and we study the applicability limits for the synthesis of present indoles 18. The reaction goes without any complications with azarin 2 carboxylates and azarin 2 carboxymid. For diaryl and aryl alkyl substituted azarins. We see uh, that the reaction leads to a high yield of pyrazol uh, indoles, but in order to detach um, uh, sulfonic acid molecules, we uh, added 40% of uh, paratolial uh, uh, sulfonic acid, and the reaction with uh, 2A, um, the reaction 2A with uh, monosubstituted azarin was complicated with the formation of uh, a lot of uh, byproducts. Previously, within the framework of this work, we demonstrated that rhodium carboxylate ca are capable to catalyze the isomerization of alkoxy, uh, um, alkoxic um, oxazoles into azarines uh, with a nearly quantitative yield. And we have uh, organized a single port synthesis uh, without uh, this uh, formation of azarines. And as a result, we um, uh, good, uh, this good yield of uh, uh, pyrazine, uh, pyrazine indoles. The studying of the structure of diazolin 2 uh, was studied using the example of um, a diphenyl azarin 4, and we got pyrazine indoles with high yield, and oh, we've studied all the unsubstituted uh, diazolin indole. And unsubstituted uh, diazoindole is a can be applied, but the yield will be much lower. And um, the atom of uh, nitrogen of in the pyridine type do not uh, and the pyridine type do does not pass away to the catalyst, and the yield was 88 percent. We've offered the mechanism of the formation of pyrazine indoles 18. Uh, that includes the formation of uh, diazohexatrine 23 and its 1 6 uh, cyclization to uh, dehydropyrazine indole 19 with the detachment of artillery sulfonic acid. Then, as reaction partners, we've studied uh, the azoles uh, with three heteroatoms, 5 alkoxy 1, 2, 3 oxidiazoles, and the oxidoderivatives oxidiazoles. And we presume that the introduction of an additional nitrogen atom. Uh, to um, polyene may have an impact on its reaction capacity. And rhodium uh, catalyzed interaction of 5 alkoxy uh, oxidiazole with triazole 1A led to imidazole 1 carboxylate formation, 24A, as the only product. And we've carried optimized the reaction conditions 
and the goal was to achieve the maximum uh, substrate conversion of 5A. In optimized conditions, we studied the applicability limits of this reaction, uh, variating the structure of 5 alkoxa oxidizol and triazole and got uh, a range of uh, metazole one carboxylates uh, with the yields from uh, very good to uh, nearly quantitative. Then we tested non-aromatic derivatives of 1 to 4 oxidizole, oxidizole alone 6. And these substrates reacted more, uh, reacted more actively than aromatic analogs, therefore we did not require additional optimization of conditions. 1LQ metazoles with high yield. And it should be noted that in many cases, emetazoles 24 and 25 can be uh, uh, cleaned without uh, chromatography, can be purified without chromatography. On this slide, we see the probable uh, formation modes of emetazoles uh, 24 and uh, 25 in rhodium catalyzed reactions of triazoles with oxidizoles 5 and 6. A menocarbonoid reacts on um, nitrogen atom with a formation of uh, metal uh, bound elid and the transformation of elid uh, into a trizag hexatrion 31a um, is coordinated by uh, the opening of uh, uh, rhodium uh, and anno bonds this interaction can be uh, similar with the formation of the 32 complex, then we see the opening of the ring that leads to betting 33 and carboxylation that leads to polyene uh, 31B. And uh, exotric cyclization of intermediates and prototype shift lead to the formation of final and metazoles. And we know that certain 5 amino metazole 1 carboxylates in increased temperatures can azomerize with a shift of ester group from endocyclic uh, nitrogen atom to uh, exocyclic one. And the majority of our metazoles were decarboxylated at 190 degrees centigrade, and it turned out that decarboxylation um, is carried out with a shift of uh, metal group uh, to the nitrogen atom. And in order to uh, uh, to scale up this azole chemistry, we studied uh, the aminocarbonoid reactions with pyrazoles, and we presumed that uh, similarly to the previous reactions, uh, we can use aminocarbonoids in order to open up uh, the anion bond. In this case, we should generate uh, previously unknown triazo octa uh, tetraen uh, intermediate that can be broadly used for further cyclizations. And rhodium catalyzed interaction of diphenyl pyrazole 7A with triazole 1A led to uh, the formation of bicyclic product uh, uh, triazo bicyclodiene uh, 36A with a quantitative yield. And we've studied the applicability limits of this reaction for the synthesis of uh, bicycles 36. We carried out several reactions with triazoles and an aryl pyrazoles. The reaction proved to be insensitive to the electron nature of iron substitutes in positions 1 and 4. And uh, for bromium pyrazole also uh, is actively uh, taking part in this reaction. And it's interesting that we managed to uh, get bicyclic product uh, from uh, anisoxaline pyrazoles. And we demonstrated that they can also open up uh, and in this reaction, we also see benzocondensed uh, uh, pyrazole analogs. And it turned out that an alkyl pyrazoles react in a more difficult manner. Uh, the boiling of triazole with unbenzyl pyrazole in the presence of uh, rhodium pyruvate uh, led to the formation of bicyclic product and to aminovinyl uh, emetazole 37-1 in the correlation 3 to 4. And uh, when this reaction was held for uh, three hours, we got just emetazole, the high yield of emetazole. To aminovinyl emetazoles 37 are the new uh, derivatives of emetazoles that can be of interest as scaffolds when we search for uh, certain medicinal products and heterocyclic ligands. Therefore, we concentrated on synthetic and mecha uh, mechanical aspects of reaction that lead us to metazoles formation. The reaction was tested on a broad range of an alkyl uh, pyrazoles with different substitutes in uh, one and oh, in positions one and four of the pyrazole cycle. We've offered this 
scheme of mechanism uh, formation that includes um, uh, intermediate formation of bicycles. And in order to uh, support this idea, we've carried out quantum chemical calculations. The Elite Complex uh, 39 can theoretically open up in triazole octatrien 41 by two modes through simultaneous um, bond opening between anion and uh, C-rhodium and two sta by two-stage um, mode with the formation of um, opening of the ring C-rhodium. Uh, and our calculations demonstrated that dissociation with uh, the maintenance of pyrazole cycle is uh, uh, implemented at a lower barrier. And the polyene transformation can be characterized as post-stage intramolecular reaction of Dills elder Tries a bicycle oxidians, 36, should be stable compounds. But as experiment demonstrated, silica gel and rhodium compounds catalyze uh, the opening up of the cycle system with the formation of amidazoles. And acid analysis is needed to replace, uh, the, uh, to change the places of substitutes because this uh, strong acceptor uh, sulfonyl substitute weakens uh, C1 and 2 uh, bond and leads to hetero. Lytic uh, ring opening. Isomerization starts with protoning of uh, N6 atom, then it leads to the opening of the bond uh, C5 N6, and uh, cation 43 is isomerized into bicyclic cation 45, and uh, deprotoning leads to isom uh, isomer bicycle 46. And then uh, the opening of the ring links uh, re leads us to the final metazole uh, formation. And we also studied metazole reactions, 37, and it was demonstrated that double bond CC in metazoles can be selectively restored by hydrogen uh, in the presence of uh, um, uh, catalysts. And at metazole, uh, we managed to um, cycle the metazole into uh, dehydromethazole uh, diazepine. Uh, during boiling, and these compounds have two nitrogen atoms that are divided uh, by a um, mobile three carbon linker, and they are the applicable substrates for chelate complexes. And this capacity uh, to coordinate with metals was demonstrated uh, using the zinc example. Thus, within the framework of this study, we developed new synthetic approaches to important five, six uh, member and uh, bicyclic uh, bridge heterocycles using domino reactions. And the approaches allow us to get uh, heterocyclic compounds from easily accessible predecessors during one synthetic stage, and they provide for high yield um, for a broad range of substitutes. And the conclusions are given on the slide. And that's basically it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yulia. Uh, please, dear colleagues, questions. Uh, uh, the questions on uh, the report. Uh, please, Vasily. Do you hear me? Yes. I would like to thank. Uh, I'm not sure whom to thank. Uh, to thank right now. Yes, uh, Mikhail Novikov and St. Petersburg State University. Okay, uh, and uh, Alexander Victorich as well. I have a questions, and as the time is limited, I have just two questions. Why you use uh, carbonoids of two types in the thesis? The ones from one sulfonyl uh, triazole, uh, maybe it would be more logical to concentrate on a diazoimmens. And the second question uh, can I ask two questions at once? Yes? And you'll have two answers at once. Yes, okay. Uh, the key intermediate product in a number of transformations um, described in the thesis under the impact of carbonoids. These are one, four diazotrions and tetrions. And at the same time, we see uh, the opening of two heterocycles. Uh, maybe you've seen uh, the description of other uh, synthesis methods and uh, methods of generation of these uh, trions. 
uh, that is not that uh, that does not introduce so much de damage for head recycle. I have no more qu no other questions. Thank you very much, Alexei. As for the use of triazoles and diazomins, initially our work was aimed. Uh, our, um, we plan to use sulfonyl triazoles um, that can exist at high temperatures. Uh, we're in this correlation with um, diazomine form. Diazoindoles were used as some relative uh, compounds in order to expand the structure uh, and variety of heterocycles. And as for the second question, uh, there's, on there's hexatrions. As far as I know, unlike uh, as a butadion, uh, there's a hexatrions and triazohexatrions and even uh, triazooctatetrions generated in this work. It's impossible to get them by other modes without the use of triazoles. Thank you, Yulia. Vasily, are you satisfied with the answers? Yes, yes, I am. Thank you, Yulia. Other questions, if any? I have one. Yes, please, Andre. Slide eight, I need to specify the energies you demonstrate. Oh, one energy and a slide 26. Yes, let's start with question one first. A slide eight. Is it free energy or just energy? Uh, these are relative and free energy, and you write del delta Z. Second question, slide 26. Uh, delta plus in nitrogen in this TS8 uh, structure. This electro, uh, electronegative atom, how how did, did it turn out that it has a positive charge? It's hard to answer this question right now, unfortunately. Delta plus, you should have a plus on hydrogen as uh, ammonium atom, iron, here. Well, that's delocalized, I believe. Maybe it can be in this. Uh, hydrogen chain. No, it's just written on uh, nitrogen. Maybe that's not just a very good image, you see. You see delocalization on several atoms here. Okay, okay. Andrea, are you satisfied with answers? Yes, I am. Other questions, if any, from the members of the board? Vadim, any questions? None? Mikhail, what about you? None? Okay. So let me ask uh, some questions then. In your title, you have this word combination N O N N N, weak bonds. Why do you see them as weak? Because in these reactions, they are the weak link of these heterocyclic molecules. Uh, the opening up of the cycle happens on these bonds. Maybe they're not the weakest. Yes, maybe I could. Uh, uh, I just use this word. And when do you have this cabinoid attack in certain at, uh, nitrogen atoms when you have an alternative? How do you, how do you explain that? Maybe some calculations. It's more nucleophil play, uh, nucleophilic place. So that's an electrophilic particle here, yes. Carbonoid is electrophilic here. Yes, I see the protoning here. And the question, um, uh, slide 15 and slide 20. You see this trions and tetrions. I believe you just fixed one of them as a mixture. And as for others, didn't, didn't you allocate the others as well? You just postulate them. Yes, they were not that stable. They swiftly react. Okay. Thank you. If there are no other questions, let's lead. To, uh, let's uh, shift to the questions of uh, everyone present. Any questions?
questions here. Did we uh, get any questions via our website? No, none. Okay. Then next uh, point. Other views of the members of the board. Before the start of our session, you submitted the reviews uh, to the dissertation board of St. Petersburg State University. And as we have this uh, uh, remote mode, I kindly ask you to read the major points uh, of the work. And please make an emphasis on the comments, please, Vadim. Uh, uh, distinguished colleagues, good afternoon. The thesis. Uh, is an experimental study uh, that is um, considered an important field, the uh, development of uh, heterocyclic mode formation. What can be more important for the organic chemist as um, the development of new method? As for the relevance of the work, it is explained by the fact that its interest is, uh, is based on constructive reactions. and. These constructive reactions that allow us to form several new bonds uh, during one synthesis stage, and that's atom efficiency uh, that is quite in demand in contemporary organic chemistry. As for the objects of study, I believe that's quite uh, uh, they are well grounded, and sulfonyl triazoles. Uh, are quite accessible substrates, and Yulia understood that uh, she can use them. And uh, that's uh, a really good choice of the object of study. And as for the literature review, you give all the necessary information. And in the experiment, we'll tell part you describe all the methods. As for the scientific novelty, there's a range of new results. Uh, the regularities that uh, define the chemical selective character of reactions. And also, you demonstrate uh, the uh, common intermediate intermediators. Uh, you describe the mechanism of the parazine indole formation, the mechanisms of formation of uh, triazole bicycle uh, butadiene, and you've demonstrated also the opportunity to use uh, one of three uh, oxidizers. And so these are important results because they allow us to develop several new synthetic uh, single port methods. And uh, Yulia demonstrated both theoretical knowledge and experimental skills. And there's a lot of experimental methods that were used, and uh, they validate the results. And also the theoretical calculations support them. So comparing this uh, data, we can say that they all coordinate well. And now questions and comments. First of all, uh, the remarks. This work is dedicated to azurin and azole reactions with rhodium carbonoids. And the literature review is wider, and it gives us the reactions of uh, that are catalyzed by other metals, first of all, uh, copper, nickel. And it seems to me that you should uh, uh, describe rhodium carbonoids, use this uh, um, uh, option, or if you consider such reactions, it would be expedient to give a comparison of uh, copper, nickel, rhodium as catalysts. And based upon this, um, co uh, this uh, comparison, you could have justified the choice of rhodium carbonoids as an object of study. But currently, uh, the substantiation of this choice is something that we lack in literature review. I believe that's not that um, Good. Second point. In the end of literature review, should have given the scheme that resembled the scheme that uh, there is in other part of the dissertation. The scheme that sub, um, summarizes the literature data on the reactions of azurins and azoles with rhodium carbonoids. And you would give different ways of this reaction. So you have this information in your literature review, and it would be wonderful to have this uh, scheme that sh would demonstrate why in this case we see this reaction and in other case we see a different reaction. So this graphic um, summary would be uh, a nice uh, option. Third remark, that's uh, rather a remark rather than a question. On page 13, 
You write that uh, 29 complexes simultaneously have electron donor and electron acceptor group on the carbon uh, hydrogen atom. Yet uh, the nature of this donor group is uh, unclear. And on page 13, it is not considered at all. And as for the literature review, you use just one sulfonyl triazole that has a donor substitute in this position and uh, butyl. So what uh, substitutes are you referring to on page 13? And now, as a synthesis scientist, I'm interested in following questions uh, in the experimental method. When you uh, describe reaction of sulfonyl triazoles with alkoxy oxaz, uh, uh, as oxazoles, you say that uh, toluene and chloroform, chloroform reaction demonstrate um, uh, uh, chemical selectivity, and you see different the two different products, either that or the, uh, either this or that one. So chemical selectivity is quite high, considering all the uh, other conditions when you have similar temperatures, similar reactions, time. So there's an impact of uh, the solution, and that's quite an unexpected result. Therefore, I have the following questions. So why uh, do you see, um, why do we see such a strong impact of uh, the solvent, and if we see it. Why do you choose uh, chloroform as a, a solvent to get pyrroles? It's not very uh, convenient from the experimental point of view for scaling because the reaction uh, requires 100 degrees Celsius and chloroform in large amounts. So uh, I wouldn't heat it up until 100 degrees in a large vessel, you see. Uh, in a large while, you see. Um, so can we presume uh, the um, process of reaction using other uh, solvents, for example, if you uh, ought to dechlor benz uh, ben benzene, or if you want to have a solvation, dimicoxyethan, dioxane, if you want to heat up as well, or uh, dimethyl formamide that gives untrivial results. Maybe the use of these solvents would... So did you try to choose, uh, to use these solvents as well? And that was my question. And certainly there, there are certain drawbacks in uh, um, the work, but uh, that's, you know, uh, these uh, remarks do not compromise the high quality of the study, you know. And the study is performed at a very high professional level. And overall, as for the work itself, and as for the scope of the experimental material, and this is, is a finished study. And there are four articles published in high-ranking journals. Everything is quite good, uh, quite well with the articles. And in conclusion, I should say this official phrase that the thesis of Yulia Strelnikova, titled uh, uh, Rhodium 3 Catalyzed Reactions of 1 Sulfonyl 1 to 3 Triazoles with Azerines and Azoles containing weak anno and anion bonds in the synthesis of nitrogen heterocycles meets the requirements of the order. Uh, on the procedure of granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University as of September the 1st, 2016. And um, Mrs. Trelnikova deserves the academic degree of the Candidate of Sciences in Chemistry in Specialization 02003 Organic Chemistry. And Article 11 of the above mentioned order is not violated. That is it, what I wanted to say. Thank you, Vadim. Yulia, please, you can answer. Thank you very much for the review. The first question was on the structure of literature review and the comparison of the use of different catalysts. Overall, I agree with your remark on the structure of the literature review. Indeed, in some reactions from alpha oxycarbonoids, we used, we can use uh, copper catalysts instead of rhodium uh, complexes that are more costly. As far as I know, using sulfonyl triazoles, uh, uh, we can use not just carboxylates of rhodium, we can also use decyclooxa. DN uh, nickel complexes with the presence of uh, 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 ligands, some uh, silver complexes and rhodium carboxylates still uh, most uh, the most universal choice. So you choose them uh, for their universal character. Yes, we could not bypass nickel reactions because they are important for 
the understanding of uh, of these reaction processes in sulfonyl triazoles. Well, you performed uh, your work, rhodium uh, uh, grew, <laughs> grew in price 10 times, and it's now very costly. Well, unfortunately, um, unfortunately, we had to use this catalyst. OK. Next question. on the literature review and the general scheme. Yes, certainly the presence of such a scheme would simplify the results of or the analysis of four works, and that's quite convenient. But in this case, uh, it's quite hard to uh, create this scheme, to develop this scheme, because these four works contain a lot of uh, contradicting data and contradicting results. and. Uh, we see the change in several important parameters uh, in these works. For example, the substitute character in azurin, uh, the character of substitutes, catalysts, the reaction conditions, and so on. Therefore, I just summed up these works and demonstrated uh, the mechanism that explains uh, the impact of all these factors on the uh, combinations of products. Next question was about the nature of electron donor group in a carbon atom of um, a carbon. So here we used uh, the terminology that, that is widely used for rhodium carbonoids in order to explain the substitution character. We used su such carbonoids are divided into three types, acceptor that have acceptor substitute and hydrogen, and then acceptor acceptor and donor acceptor. And donor groups include vinyl, aryl, and heteroiral substitute that can donate electron density for the um, hydrogen uh, carbon atom. And we use triazoles that contain ar uh, aryl substitute. So you, aryl is a donor here, yes, okay, thank you. Then about the solvents, the question on the solvents. Yes, yes, the, imp uh, the influence of the solvent. Uh, why there is this um, in impact? So w we can say that there can be several reasons for this impact. One of them. One of them is the impact of uh, salva uh, salvation capacity of uh, chloroform on the uh, uh, betaine uh, salvation uh, and increases the concentration of this particle in reaction uh, compound and it leads to the rise of pyrrole yield compared with similar reactions in less uh, salvating toluene. And as for the use of other solvents, autodichlorobenzol was not that convenient because of high boiling temperature, and it's also hard to um, generate uh, this yield here that we should have tested maybe that. Uh, and as for other solvents, they cannot uh, work in um, uh, the processes where we have rhodium carbonyls because they have a reaction there. Thank you. Thank you, Yulia. Are you satisfied, Vadim? Yes, yes, I am. Uh, yes, the impact of the solvent is quite significant. OK. Then I give the floor to Mikhail Krasavin. So please, Mikhail, you have the floor. Just the major points and your questions and remarks. Thank you. First of all, I would like to say at once that I know this work quite well, and I uh, read it before I was appointed the member of the board, and Yulia had um, given her results at several conferences. Therefore, I um, heard these reports on the research, and I would like to emphasize the high level, the integrity of the work, and um, uh, really perfect publications. And. Uh, I would like to compliment the author on the literature review, and that's not 
by chance because uh, the literature review, I believe, is something that was quite simple for Yulia because uh, no, the Novikov group is one of the key players in this field of chemistry. And in such approaches in this uh, lab is some are something quite popular. And regardless of the fact that that's quite a novel chemistry field, uh, we have a lot of literature, 88 sources, literature sources, the global sources as well. And it's noteworthy that uh, one-fifth of that uh, global literature scope was generated by the Novikov scientific group. And I believe it was easy for Yulia to structure the discussion of results. I would call the structure of this section quite a European type structure when every section gives Uh, gives the results of uh, each particular article, excluding the last part uh, that was not published uh, in uh, academic journals. I believe that in the near future we'll see this publication on uh, the last part of the research. So I won't uh, dwell upon each of the chapters. I believe that they are quite good and the results are quite impressive. And you've studied uh, the fields of application in detail. Uh, you've studied the methods, application, and also all the theoretical ideas are supported by calculations. Uh, that's also a strong point of the thesis and uh, of the approach of this uh, team of scientists. And therefore, we collab uh, have a lot of collaboration with uh, this research group of Professor Novikov. And I wanted to, man to mention the last part of the work, uh, a very good, important synthetic discoveries, the opportunities to create additional cycles. That's quite a good work from this point of view as well. I have no major remarks. I believe that's a very good, uh, nearly ideal study. This is, and I have a short remark that I mentioned on the use of the method of these uh, uh, curved arrows. The mechanism of pyrus information on scheme 13. I believe something should be corrected here. And because you offered to uh, eliminate peritolin, uh, um, sulfonic acid requires one of the nitrogen atoms, dehydropyrazine of dehydropyrazine core, it should be protonated. Then you see the elimination of paratoin sulfonic acid. And this uh, curved arrow goes from the center of positive charge. And this really violates the convention of uh, representation of this mechanism and so on. Therefore, I believe that it would be expedient to correct and to introduce certain corrections here. And I believe you've seen this uh, remark in my review, and you've prepared um, an answer for that. And second point is rather an offer than a comment. Uh, quite frequently, when we discuss mechanisms, they are described in detail. And mostly, you understand how one particle turns into another one. And this word description in the text is quite enough, quite sufficient. Yet sometimes we may see certain simplification 
In particular, this curve arrow method can be quite useful in order to demonstrate these transformations. Here I'm refer referring to scheme 33, 32 of uh, the thesis, where you see the discussion of the formation of pyros and endels. And in the text, you see that there is this uh, transformation of intermediate of 22 to 23. Therefore, it was hard for me to uh, to have an impression of this integral flow of electrons from plus uh, to minus. Ideal for it is an elementary stage of transformation. I believe you should have introduced some details here. But these are these two formal remarks. Overall, I have a very positive impression on the work. And just a formality, I want to say this phrase. The thesis by Yulia Strelnikova titled Rhodium to Catalyze Reactions in One Sulfonyl or One to Three Trisols with Azurins and Azoles containing weak anon. NO and NN bonds in the synthesis of nitrogen heterocycles meets the requirement, the basic requirements of the orders of September the 1st, 2016, uh, number 6821 1 on the procedure of granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University. And uh, Mrs. Strelnikova deserves uh, the academic degree of the candidate of sciences in chemistry in specialization uh, double. Uh, 020003 Organic Chemistry and Article 11 of the above mentioned order is not violated. Thank you. Thank you, Mikhail. Yulia, please. Thank you very much for the review. As for this scheme 13, certainly there is a misprint here. In second structure, I used uh, ex uh, this. Um, uh, arrow that is not needed here. As for the second remark, the mechanism of the transformation of uh, compound 22 to 23 is given here using this uh, curve arrows. Uh, and this is quite a coordinated process. Thank you. Thank you, Yulia. Mikhail, are you satisfied with the answers? Yes, yes, I am. Thank you. And now I give the floor to uh, Professor Bakulev. Please, Vasily, you have the floor. Uh, please turn on the sound. Yes, yes, I got it, got it. I was turning the microphone on. So do you hear me well? Yes, yes, we do. Distinguished colleagues, No doubt, we've heard a very strong, nice, and fascinating report. I won't uh, give a, a typical uh, opponent review, uh, but still I want to mention that I liked the literature review, and I believe for many uh, scientists liked it because it was aimed at and it was structured so that it would be easier to understand the following conclusions. Yes, it could be um, published differently yet uh, for opponents, for those people that read the thesis. Um, the literature review was quite convenient was quite conveniently structured. So that's a comprehensive study of one pro uh, problem, spectral studies, synthesis, reaction, uh, reactive capacity, and also a lot of theoretical studies that are given here. A, a very huge scope of work was performed by Yulia. Experimental and theoretical st uh, studies. I've just tried to calculate, but it seems to me that over 200 original uh, chemical compounds were synthesized. And I believe that uh, that's a record, as far as I remember. 
and this demonstrates uh, um, that this work is quite a strong one. And I've had a look at the spectra, and you know, so many com new compounds synthesized, and the spectra are described quite well. There are no impurities, just in one compound I saw this impurity of uh, the solvent. But this did not change my a very positive impression on the reviewed work is, is because you frequently see um, that the experimental component is not that impressive and you can make a conclusion that the solvent uh, and you can make a conclusion on the solvent used without even reading the experimental part. Therefore, I highly appreciate the scientific results. Uh, they are really uh, impressive. A lot of hydrocycles involved in uh, quite unusual reactions with carbonoids. And I read a lot on the topic. I'll tell you about that later on. Uh, essentially, You've give, uh, given us the set of transformations of this uh, carbonoids, and that's really a new approach to the synthesis of heterocycles. And it gives us the new methodology of organic synthesis. I don't have any key remarks. I have just a question. Maybe it can be considered as a remark. But on page 62, you're right. A quotation. Unfortunately, the experiments with uh, diazoendolin 2A and isoxazole 3A and rhodium catalysts demonstrated that isoxazoles are not active in this reaction. On the other hand, on page 66, you've demonstrated single port method of um, uh, the reaction of um, diazoendolins. And as for the conclusion, this formal conclusion, uh, I would like to say that the research is very good and it deserves uh, the academic degree of the candidate of sciences and it meets all the requirements. And I would like to give you my personal view on the thesis. It turned out that I'm working with one, two, three triazoles and diazo compounds. I started doing that from uh, 1980s, and overall, a lot was done by our lab. And there are new methods, new concepts of heterocyclic reactions. So that's nearly just the same as pseudo uh, cyclic. That's a Russian option of American conclusions. And it seemed to me that in late 90s, it seemed to me that everything was already done for one, two, three triazoles. And uh, then Maldov discovery and Chopin's discovery uh, that went simultaneously. And these are click reactions. And the attribution of azides, uh, the attachment of azides. And this provided a strong impetus to the, chem to the development of the chemistry of one, two, three triazoles. And up until 2008, it seemed to us what else can be uh, developed here. And then the work of uh, Givorgian and Fokin, Murakami, and uh, all the students and days from the United States, they found interesting rhodium catalyzed transformations of one sulfonyl, not just sulfonyl, there was a uh, heteroaryl of triazoles. And it gave way to a lot of uh, uh, further studies. There are a lot of Chinese works. And uh, I asked questions, uh, the question, what comes next? And uh, here I believe this work that we've listened to today is in line with all these advanced developments. It was quite unexpected for me that the work will go in this direction. 
and that it will involve these catalytic reactions of one sulfonyl, one to three triazoles, diazoendols uh, were also uh, uh, used here. It was quite unexpected that the work will uh, consider this field of science. Therefore, I certainly have a very good impression on the work. And in conclusion, I just read these uh, formal words. That the thesis by Yulia Strelnikova titled Rhodium uh, 2 catalyzed reactions of 1 sulfonyl 1 to 3 triazoles with azurins and azoles containing weak anno and anan bonds in the synthesis of nitrogen heterocycles meets the requirements of the orders of September the 1st, 2016 on the procedure of granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University. And Madam Strelnikova deserves the academic degree of the candidate of sciences and chemistry in specialization 02003 organic chemistry. And Article 11 of the above mentioned order is not violated. Thank you very much. That's it. Thank you very much, Vasily. On one of the slides, Alega, uh, Yulia quoted your work of 1984 on the shift of metoxic uh, carbonyl group. Yes, I wanted to mention that as well, that it's very nice. Yes, you are, you are a classic writer. Yes, thank you very much, Yulia, for this reference. So please, Yulia. So, Yulia, your answer. Thank you very much for the review. As for the diazoindole reaction with uh, uh, isoxazole. When we mix them all with rhodium catalyst and heat up the compound, we see that just the detachment of uh, this compound without the isoxazole formation. And when we previously heat isoxazole in the presence of rhodium catalyst until full conversion into azurin and then add up uh, diaz uh, diazoindole, then we have this target product and product, and there's no contradiction here. OK, thank you. Thank you, Yulia. Vasily, are you satisfied with the answer? Yes, yes, I am. And now I give the floor to Professor Falkin. So please, Andre, you have the floor. Do you hear me? Yes, yes, we do. Uh, I was pleased by the invitation to be uh, an opponent for this work. I'm not a heterocycle chemistry expert. I have just a few works in this field. But generally, I did not review this heterocyclic works. But recently, I made, uh, I decided to make exceptions. And in my corridor, I have a poster 200 top drugs, pharmaceutical substances. And if we compare 2006 and 2019, we see that the number of products of organic synthesis uh, drops, this quality of products drops. And the only thing that saves us here is a nitrogen containing uh, hydrocycles. And if we look at this 200 drugs, 80 drugs are nitrogen containing hydrocycles. Therefore, we should, we must promote the development of this field and the relevance of the study uh, is not questioned at all. Another point is that a lot of heterocyclic works in the world mask, try to hide something new that they introduce as a novelty. And in this work, we see no such problems. The fundamental character is quite obvious. The class of organic reactions is a very important class of organic transformations. Therefore, this fundamental character of the work is not questioned at all. Certainly, this work is synthetic. And the, num the scope of experiment is really impressive. And in this regard, the work 
can be important for combination synthesis, for the correlation of the uh, characteristics of heterocycles. So it, we do not question the practical value of the work. Thus, in all three parameters, the work really deserves and the title of the candidates, our PhD thesis. And an important point in this work is uh, uh, computer modeling. And in this work, we also see this approach. Certainly, a rhodium problem. It's hard to calculate these processes with rhodium, with these uh, habit transition metals. I'll have several remarks here. At this point, I'll read them later on. But overall, I believe that the evaluation of the results is quite impressive. There are a lot of quotations. The articles in chalk, um, more than 15 quotations already. And the level of evaluation is quite impressive. It's not questioned. And the publications in very good journals as well. This joke journal, OBMC. Yes, organic biomolecular chemistry. Uh, and a park entrance, too. Yes, park entrance actions, too. The only thing that I wanted to mention you can have cumulative defense uh, when you have such a level of uh, studies. Because in the West, they just uh, uh, use uh, the publication of articles. Yes, but we are in Russia. We need to write PhD thesis. Yes, um, I just uh, think that this, uh, this work could pass a cumulative defense in uh, Stanford, for example. Yes, uh, we just shifted to the PhD system in Ukraine, to the Boulogne system. You know, it's... It okay, gets a lot of criticism. We won't discuss that. Therefore, I'll read out my remarks that I had in my review of the first part on the computer part and the calculation of elites. elites. And there's a need to give free energy in some cases. And I had a question on page 58. The calculation demonstrated that all pro uh, that both processes go through uh, the same transition stage, and um, this requires uh, IRC analysis. And then you should have used the basic sets. because this basis is quite narrow if used, better alloys, so maybe the basis is not that impressive. So you should have used single, more single points. And I had a remark on experimental part. I, it was hard to see the melting temperatures in some cases, and uh, the data on element content of the components. So these are uh, that's all basically, and these are not mm, some serious uh, contradictions. And the conclusions are already published, and, and the practical value is not questioned. And these results are really new, and they're quite fundamental. Certainly, I will vote for. Uh, uh, the award of the academic degree, and there are some formal uh, words to mention that uh, the thesis correspond meets the requirements of for the order of St. Petersburg State University on the provision of uh, academic degrees, and uh, the candidate for the degree deserves the academic degree of the candidate of sciences in chemistry and specialization, uh, organic chemistry. And article level of the above mentioned order is not violated. Thank you very much, Arthur. Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, Andre. Please, you know, in order to consider the impact of the environment, in order to optimize geometry of the structures and to calculate thermodynamic parameters, uh, in section three five three three two three, 
We've used solvation um, a model of the polarized continuum for toluene. As for this phrase on page 58 on this transition stage, uh, TS1 for two different processes. This phrase is not correct. Certainly, we are talking about different transition states and structure, but they coincided in energy uh, indications. Therefore, um, in the image, they can't be separated. And their correspondence to the processes was checked with the IRC analysis. They were checked as any other structures. Next, next question on the use of a DFT method and other bases. Indeed, it would be interesting to use other bases, yet in this work we did not perform that. And I believe that it should be noted that the calculations uh, of DFT method remain quite satisfactory if we consider the reliability, and they're quite convenient if we take machine time into account for us in particular. As for the experimental part, for all new compounds, I give a proton and uh, electron uh, NMR spectra, and for all the new um, hard substances, I give melting temperatures. Elemental analysis was not carried out due to technical difficulties at our resource center, but we performed the studies that gave us uh, the HRMS data. Yes, high resolution mass spectrometry. Is that it? Yes. Andrei, are you satisfied with the answers? Yes. Okay, and the conclusion review, uh, my review. Summing up what my colleagues said, I fully support this work, and I would like to join in and uh, add up my positive assessment of the work. And uh, on, I would like to mention the following thing. Yulia offers this mini strategy of obtaining certain heterocycles based on carbonoid reactions with certain heterocycles. And what I liked. Uh, when I got acquainted with the work, it was uh, written quite well. When I read this uh, thesis, I read it just at once when I started reading it. That's an interesting journey to the world of molecules. Uh, so how do PhD students write? First of all, they write English articles, then translate them into Russian, and uh, then give this text. And uh, Yulia knows Russian scientific language quite well. Therefore, it was very pleasant to read. Uh, so thank you very much for this joy. And I have two remarks. First question. On the first part of the work, when you obtained dehydropyrazines and pyrroles and then started to change the reaction conditions and got uh, the fi uh, different final products, uh, didn't you consider the opportunities that dehydropyrazine, they are kinetic control products, they are quickly formed and then they can uh, isomerize into uh, eight pyrroles? Uh, is it possible? Maybe you consider that. A second question on the reaction mechanisms. These interesting hexatrains or tetrains, uh, just one example in the work, uh, there's a hexatrain 11. So you've fixed the magnetic uh, resonance spectrum for it. Maybe you used other methods, mass spectrometry for analysis, um, maybe you used soft flow method. Quite frequently, uh, they fix uh, intermediate uh, in mass. So did you do this analysis? But overall, I believe that the thesis by Yulia meets the requirements of the order as of on the procedure for granting academic degrees of Saint at St. Petersburg State University. And Madam Strelinko deserves the academic degree of the candidate of sciences in, chem in chemistry, in organic chemistry. And Article 11 of the above mentioned order is not violated. Thank you very much for your review. Indeed, we carried out experiments, and there were attempts to check whether dehydropyrazine 9 turns into pyrrole 8. Just a moment. Yes. 
and heating of reaction compounds that contained dehydropyrazine in heating, in heating at high temperatures, in adding rhodium catalyst. We did not observe the shift of dehydropyrazine uh, 9 to pyrrole 10. We just have some trace amounts of aromatic pyrazine 10. And overall, these results um, comply with the results of quantum chemistry analysis because this barrier 1,6 retrocyclization of dehydropyrazines into diazohexatriones is quite uh, large. And this process can't compete with the detachment of, um, of sulfonic acid. Second question on the intermediates uh, 11. This intermediate 11 was fixed with uh, spectroscopy, NMR spectroscopy on silica gel. It was unstable. And the use of mass spectrometry here is useless because in a reaction compound, we have several, we may have several particles with the same molecular ion, including the reaction products. And the use of NMR spectroscopy allowed us to um, uh, imagine the structure of intermediate and uh, track the um, transformation process in different conditions. And that's quite reliable. Thank you. Thank you very much. So these are all the reviews of the members of the board. And now, according our, uh, to our agenda, I ask everyone present if anyone is willing to speak out and deliver their reviews. Uh, did we have any questions submitted by online uh, by website? None. Okay, let's shift to uh, the presentation of the scientific supervisor. Just a few words. First of all, I would like to thank all the members of uh, the board that they found time to get acquainted with the thesis and take part in our uh, session of the board. Thank you very much, everyone, for that. And as for the thesis and as for the work of uh, Yulia, I can say the following thing. <sighs> what we initially imagined and what we got finally that's an example. Uh, that's a real, really a pleasure for me because I'm very pleased to see the results of uh, uh, Yulia. She came uh, when she was a junior student, and she has been successfully working for so many years in our team. As part of uh, as a member of our team, she is quite an industrious, a, a positive person. She was very fascinated by the work and. The results of her work and our communication was always a pleasure for me. And I also want to say that this specificity of this dissertation, I'm referring to this triazol topic, it had a certain impact on the entire rhythm of the work. We had a very strict competition here. That is the topic that is quite popular, and we had to take part in this race of studies. Several groups from China were working in the field and uh, at the same time, and we independently got uh, quite similar results, and they did not coincide in the content. Luckily, but we had such problems that there was a diff uh, or there was this week's difference in uh, publications. Uh, so sometimes we were quite nervous, but still Julia managed to cope with that, and uh, we got quite a good uh, result. We managed to publish our results thanks to Julia's. Uh, passion for the work, and she 
also had other scientific processes, uh, projects. Quite recently, in a synthesis journal, a journal, her article was published on the reactions of dye compounds with oxidizers. There's a huge article there as well. So she's quite an industrious scientist. She worked a lot. Therefore, there's so much uh, data received. And within these years, she really turned into a professional chemist, uh, synthesis chemist that cannot just think and work, but also she can guide and manage team's work. Therefore, I have no doubt that she is a very developed, very well-developed candidate of sciences in chemistry. Distinguished colleagues, as we are working um, remotely, I would like to ask if any of the colleagues has any questions connected with this remote mode of work. No? None? OK. That, then we are to decide whether we are going to organize uh, um, closed voting. In this case, everyone present should leave the hall, or we can uh, start open balloting at once. How do you think? Vadim? I believe we all have the same opinions, therefore we, there's no need to negotiate here. So we should to open balloting. Yes? OK. OK, uh, then I raise the question on uh, the award of the academic degree of candidate of sciences in chemistry in specialization uh, 020003, again in chemistry, to open balloting. And let me remind you that the decision of the dissertation board on conferring the academic degree is positive, providing more than 50 percent of the board members, not fewer than three people, voted in favor. That's in conformity with section 23 of the order. So uh, let's shift to open balloting then. Uh, Vatim Bayarsky, your opinion. I vote for the award of the academic degree to Yulia. Thank you, Vadim. Uh, Professor Krasavin, what's your opinion? I fully support the award of the academic degree. Thank you. Uh, Vasily Bakulev, your opinion? Yes, I share the opinions of my colleagues. I support the award of the academic degree to uh, Madam Strelnikova. Thank you. Andrei Fokin, your opinion? Yes, I also support the work. And I, as uh, the chairman, Alexander Vasilev, also vote for the award of the academic degree. So, distinguished colleagues, distinguished guests of our session, I would like to announce that out of the five members of the board, five voted in favor, no one voted against, and no one abstained from the vote. Thus, uh, the decision on the award of the academic degree of the candidate of uh, sciences and chemistry in specialization, organic chemistry, is made. So, congratulations. Yes. Uh, now I'll give the floor for the finalizing remarks. But before that, I want to ask if we, there are any questions uh, on the procedure due to the fact that we are working remotely. So no questions. OK. So Yulia, please, you have the floor for the finalizing remarks. I would like to thank all the members of the board for taking part in the session. I would like to particularly thank Andre and Vasily. And I would like to thank my uh, supervisors, Professor Novikov and Rostovsky. Uh, thank you so much uh, to my family members, and I would like to thank everyone present for the support. Thank you. Thank you, Yulia. Once again, we congratulate you with the award of the academic degree of the candidate of sciences in chemistry. So I therefore close our meeting, our session. Thank you very much for taking part in it and turn off the program.